If you're bending over your back whenever you're supposed to be bending your knees, please stop. All right, first let me thank my patrons. I really appreciate you guys. And I did not imagine I'd have the amount of people who signed up over the past month sign up. Gonna be very active there. If you guys are reaching out to me to help you with specific tricks, I've said it in other videos, I'm gonna keep saying it. I'm not gonna be answering those anymore. The volume of questions is too high and I have a whole other life that I have to tend to. So if you really wanna learn from me and you really value my opinion, show it by supporting me on the Patreon. There are tiers as low as $1. So get that out of the way. Let's get into this rookie mistake. It's number five, and this one, everyone commits it. Beginners, experts, it's impossible to completely do away with this, but you can improve the amount that you're doing it. So a lot of you guys are probably bending your back over instead of bending your knees, and you might not even know it because a lot of my students do this. When I tell them to bend their knees to do an ollie, when I tell them to bend their knees because we're rolling down a set of stairs and the proper way to correct your balance is to drop down a little bit lower as you drop down each stair. And I'm teaching this so that they can learn to deal with the little rumbling movements that your skateboard is gonna give you because it takes muscle memory to deal with this properly and beginners don't have it. But what I inevitably run into is my students will start to bend their back over a little bit more with each step and sometimes won't bend their knees at all. Now they don't know that they're doing this but when you start off with any type of physical activity, you're not accustomed to the movements that are necessary to perform maneuvers successfully. And so we have to learn these and we have to practice these deliberately. So I'm gonna give you guys an exercise that you can do that will correct this. And this is what I do with my students. Now, let me start this off by saying, if you have a skateboard where you can't stand shoulder width apart on your board without being on the nose and tail, your board is too short for you and you need to get a new one. If you're not able to get a new one, I dealt with it. I skated a very tiny board in the beginning. Uh, you know, you can't always get what you want. I made it work, you can make it work too. But if you have the ability to get a skateboard where you can stand shoulder width and be on the bolts, that's what you wanna be riding because that's what's gonna be the best for a beginner. Now, it's a debate which size you wanna skate uh, once you're more advanced, you know, it depends on the size of your foot, depends on how tall you are, what you're skating and all of that. But for beginners, I recommend about an 8.25 with deck because usually that's gonna be a length where just about everyone can stand shoulder width apart. So how we're gonna fix this bending over of our back is we're gonna step off of our skateboard. We're gonna stand shoulder width. We're gonna have our arms up. And I noticed some of you guys, having your arms up all the time feels goofy, but there's a reason that I teach this and it's because you're gonna need to use your arms with your legs in order to skate properly. And you might wanna have a style where your arms are a little bit further down, but let me tell you this, if you're focusing on style as a beginner, you are really throwing your ability to progress over a cliff because you can't have style as a beginner, right? Your body is not adept at the movements necessary to have a style when you skateboard. So get that idea out of your head for the first couple of years, I would say, and just focus on skills, developing the skill set that it takes to be a good skateboarder. And in time, style will come. Your style's gonna come from an amalgamation of the skaters who you watch and admire. Myself, I have mental images that I bring up whenever I'm doing certain tricks. For instance, my great friend, we traveled all over the place together, have skated together for years, Jordan Maxim. Before I skated with him, I couldn't backside over crook a handrail, but I watched him do it so many times that the image of him doing it was burned into my head, and now I picture him when I do my back over crook. And that's allowed me to do them, right? It kind of simplified how to do the trick. So, we're gonna get our arms up. We're gonna stand shoulder width apart. We're gonna start from the position that I recommend you start from, right? So you shouldn't be standing all the way straight up at any time while you're skating, right? So you're gonna be slightly bent at the knee. Our arms are gonna be up. We're gonna drop our arms to about here as we crouch. So we're gonna time this together. As we're lowering our knees, we're gonna focus on not bending our back over, right? Our back is going to be bent just a little bit but we want it to be less than a 45 degree angle, which would be about here, right? Because some of you guys, you're starting here 
and you're bending over to about a 90 degree angle and that's causing you to lose your balance. It's making it hard for you to ollie and you might not even be bending your knees at all. You're just bending your back instead of your knees. So we're going to fix that by standing off of our board, crouching down, lowering our arms as we crouch down to about here and then coming back up and raising our arms back up as we come back up. And if you need to look in a mirror to make sure you're not bending your back, look in the mirror, do this at home. And you're gonna keep doing this until you don't have to focus too hard to come down without hunching your back over. Okay, once you're able to do that, you're gonna take your skateboard, you're gonna put it on grass, or you're gonna put it on some of that foam that they have on playgrounds for children these, these days. You're gonna stand with your back foot on the tail and your front foot just below the bolts, and you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna come down, you're gonna come up, you're gonna come down, you're gonna come up. And once you're comfortable doing that and you're not hunching your back over, you're only bending your knees and you're only lowering your arms slightly and then picking them back up, then you're gonna start doing the same thing. But as you crouch down, you're gonna push the tail down to the ground so that the nose lifts up. You're gonna make sure that you're not leaning forward with your back then, and you're gonna make sure that you're not leaning back to press the tail down to the ground. Because that's another rookie mistake we're gonna talk about is using your whole body to, to move the board instead of what's which, the part of your body you're supposed to be using, right? But we'll get to that later. So you're going to crouch down and you're gonna lift your board up. You're gonna put the board back down, stand back up to the starting position, crouch down, lift your board up. And once you're comfortable doing this, then you're gonna do both of these things again, but on the concrete, and then from a slight roll, and then you're gonna add this to your ollie. So then you're gonna practice your ollies. Arms up, slightly bring your arms down, crouch, make sure you're not bending your back, and then ollie. And you're gonna do the same thing with every trick that you can do. You're gonna make sure that this range of motion that you're practicing where your arms are slightly coming down, you're bending your knees, but you're keeping your back as straight as you can comfortably and be able to look at your feet and your board when you're performing the maneuver. So for me, my back is about here, right? And I try not to go past there. You might be able to go a little bit further, but you don't want to go here to 45 degrees and you definitely don't want to pass that because what's going to happen is, let's say you ollie and your back is bent over all the way to here. I don't know what this is, 70 degrees. Well, you're going to land and then you're going to lean on your toes, which is going to knock you off your board. And I bet there's a lot of you guys that are, you think you're doing everything perfect for your tricks, but you're landing and you're getting pitched off your board toe side. And the reason this is happening is because of what you're doing. You're bending your back over instead of only bending your knees. Like I've said before, I wanna stress this to you guys, the skateboard is an inanimate object. It doesn't do anything that you don't cause it to do. If you control your body, you control your board. So that's all I've got for this one. This is a vital rookie mistake to fix but it is one that doesn't take too much work to correct. And you wanna correct it early because you want to make sure that you're not committing these rookie mistakes by the time you're attempting more complex maneuvers, right? We wanna make sure that we're doing everything possible to make these movements as easy as they possibly can be. Because the better you get, the harder it is to get up to each plateau. By the time you get to my level of skating, it really sucks because in order for you to learn something, you gotta strap up and be ready to try it for three months, which is kinda like it was in the beginning. So it's a bell curve, for lack of a better, uh, for lack of a better term to use. I know that the term bell curve has a stigma. In the beginning, it is extremely difficult to learn tricks. And then as you level up in your abilities, it gets slightly easier. And then once you get to the expert level, it gets increasingly more difficult because of the amount of maneuvers you have to combine to learn these tricks. And you will only make things a lot harder for yourself. You might even make it so difficult that you'll wanna give up skating if you don't correct these rookie mistakes early, making it facilitating your learning process. That's all I've got. Uh, consider joining the Patreon, like I said, if you want to ask me specific questions, I'll be answering them there. If you want to have some input into which videos I make next, I'll be answering them there. All you guys that are signed up, I'm going to be sending you out a little post today asking you guys to vote on which trick I should cover next. So if you're one of my patrons, uh, be on the lookout for that. Also, if you want to support Collage Skateboards, www.collageskateboards.com is our website. We've got two graphics up there 
in three different sizes. We have some shirts. I think we only have like medium, smalls, and extra larges left. No more large. But uh, yeah, check those out. Thank you guys for your support. And if you're somewhere besides LA, because we're getting like a little hailstorm in LA today, enjoy skateboarding today.